Hey folks, David Watts here. Another Luminar uh, tutorial for you. This time a portrait. I want to show you some things I've done with a wall of LED lights and uh, Luminar. And I'm using my Fuji X-H1, but you can do this with virtually any camera. Uh, any of the Fuji cameras, Sony, whatever you like, Canon, it's not that hard. Um, I think you'll like the result. Uh, the key is to use a good portrait lens. I'm using a 90 millimeter f2. You could use a 50 millimeter. There's some real nice, Canon has some nice cheap ones that are, you know, f1.8 or even larger aperture. Uh, you'll want something like that that can really blur the background. So I want to show you how we take a fairly ordinary picture here at the outset. And this is a raw file um, and how we turned it into something kind of cool. First, let me show you how we're achieving the LED lights. This is easy. Uh, you've seen these LED sort of light walls you can buy. Let me flip over here. I want to show you the one I bought. Uh, this is on Amazon. In fact, I bought this back on April 11. Uh, Twinkle Star 300 LED window curtain string light. 16 bucks. Free shipping. Get that kind of thing. I got the warm white. I don't know that it matters a huge amount, but get what you like. Um, 16 bucks, pretty cool. So what I did, uh, hung it up outside. I just got some little um, magnets uh, and, and uh, hung it up outside, um, let it get a little dark outside, used just a little bit of supplemental lighting in the front. I have a Roto Neolite 2. You could use some other form of lighting, whatever you like. Uh, you don't want to get the lighting too harsh. I almost got it a little too harsh in her face, but you'll see what we do with that here in just a moment. So anyway, all I've done, I've taken the raw file, loaded it into Luminar, and the first thing you'll notice is the colors just look all lousy with it. I think the white balance really struggles. We've got some light on her face that's probably a different color than the lights in the background. Oh, by the way, I've got her separated from this wall of LED lights by about probably 10 feet or so. Um, and so that allows us to focus on her face. By the time, you know, uh, we get to the lights in the background, they're all out of focus. So it makes nice bouquet and kind of a pleasing background. It may be a little much actually right now, but I think we can work with that. Okay. So um, the, the color is all bad. The first thing I would do in Luminar is actually add uh, the raw develop filter and that will go right up here to the top. It automatically goes to the top because that's really the first filter uh, we should be working with if we want to process a raw image in this fashion. Uh, I often use the JPEG images but with raw you've got more latitude about the white balance and this one needs some white balance help kind of badly. So um, given that I want the, the greater latitude, I'm using the raw file. I'll click on the little eyedrop here to sample something that really should be white. And one of the things I often use is the white of someone's eyes. It won't be perfect, but it'll get you pretty close. And you'll see right away it's not perfect. So now I can tone this down just a bit. And really it's just bringing this back to something that looks a bit more realistic. So usually I start with the temperature, bring that down just a bit. And you can play with the tint. I always will go to the extremes and then try to find that perfect sort of sweet spot that looks too yellowish or greenish. And somewhere in here may be about right. The other thing I'll do, again, you'll notice I probably got a little bit of a hot spot on her face in places. I might tweak the exposure just a bit and then the highlights. So let's, what, let's see what happens when we go uh, all the way to the right on the highlights. And it'll take it just a second to process. Uh, but it, it will not help at all this issue. But if I go further left, you can see it did reduce some of that uh, glare, that little bit of overexposure. Again, all the way to the end, all the way high. You see this is definitely the right direction to go. I don't know that I'll really work with anything else at the moment. You could adjust clarity, but that's usually not going to be flattering for a portrait kind of image. You see, it just shows more of our inevitable little skin defect. So keep the clarity down. That's probably a good starting place from a raw perspective. Okay. We won't need to mess with color temperature because we've already done that at the raw level. You don't want to do it again at this other level. 
And you might try the Accent AI filter. I, this, of course, is my little custom workspace of the kind of filters I typically use. But I find that in these kind of images, AI doesn't necessarily give me what I want. So for now, we'll leave that off. Um, again, with tone, I've got exposure and contrast and, you know, highlights and shadows. But really, I'd prefer, if I'm going to work in RAW, I've got some of those controls right here. I'd prefer to work with it at the RAW level. I think I'll get better results. I'm skipping tone as well. Uh, what I typically do is I will uh, bring down uh, the saturation a bit. Because, again, if you go real high on saturation, you can see the cartoonish effect you don't want. And this image, I think, is a little high on uh, the saturation size. I'm going to tone that down a bit. And then I tend to bring it back just slightly with vibrance. I think that can be a little more flattering. Then, for portraits, I like to use the structure filter and drop the amount. Okay. Now, typically what I'll do is paint this in. You almost could get away with not doing it, except you'll lose detail in the hair. The background, you're not really... There's no detail really to lose. I'm going to go ahead and paint it in like I normally would. I just select this brush and the brush tool. I change the size just a bit. And then I will be painting in that destructuring or essentially a little bit of skin smoothing. Um, just in the, the area of the skin here. And leaving the eyes alone, the mouth, trying to avoid that. And once I've got it painted in, I can, well, I'll click done up here just to close that out. But you'll see I can, you know, keep adjusting the, the skin smoothing. I think that's too much. Somewhere in here, typically, you know, maybe negative 30 to 40. Uh, it usually works pretty good. So. That's a real quick sort of improvement, but I want to show you something else uh, we can do. Um, oh, and by the way, you might look at the image and say, now I want to do a little more of this kind of work. You might even do some up here in her hair, just to sort of soften uh, the look a little bit more. And something like this. And you see it takes it just a moment to sort of reset. Okay, but you get the points. You can season the taste as, as you see fit. But here's something else I would try. To me, the, the bouquet, although I love this kind of wall of lights, it's a little, maybe a little overpowering for the, for the image. I want the focus to be on her. I think what I would do is come in here and add a layer, a new adjustment layer. And let's consider adding saturation and vibrance to this new layer. In fact, I'm just going to call this layer. You can double click, call it DSAT background. Okay. And uh, what I want to do is potentially uh, desaturate just uh, the, the bouquet there uh, without affecting her. Um, and so to do that, I need to apply a mask brush again, except this time. I'd rather use erase. So instead of paint the mask on, I'd rather erase the mask from the area that I do not want to be affected. Now, when I click erase, if I click the little eye, you can see the mask right now is on the entire image. The entire image will be affected by what I adjust here. But I don't want the entire image to be affected. Let me take that off. What I'll do is I will paint just over her face and her hair and the little bit of her shoulder that we see here and her neck. All right. And then when I click again up here, I can see what I've done. I'm now exposing uh, her face and, and these details. I'm removing the mask from those areas. They will not be affected by uh, the changes I'm about to experiment with. So you don't have to be, in this kind of image, you don't have to be super... Uh, precise on the hair. And you'll see why in just a moment. But we'll just try to get it, you know, halfway right. Just for illustration purposes anyway. Okay. So, now what I can do, watch what happens when I drop the saturation all the way down. Voila. I've not really desaturated her face, but just the background area. Or I could 
put the saturation back to where it was and try to do the same thing with vibrance. And you might prefer one look or the other. But let's, let's do that kind of thing. We'll put it down to maybe about here. I think you start to get a more pleasing, more balanced sort of image between her face in the foreground as a portrait and what you see uh, there in the background with the, the bouquet. Now, if we want to get a little more creative, here's one more thing we can do. Uh, and naturally, this is in the creative section of uh, the filters. And that is hue shift. So, watch what happens uh, when we do this. Uh, that's not exactly what we wanted. And the reason for that is um, when I applied this uh, this uh, filter for saturation and vibrance, I painted it in uh, at this filter level. So what I, I really should not have done it that way. Let's reset all this. In fact, let's kill that filter completely. We're going to kill this one too. So you can learn from my mistake. What I should have done is applied the filter up at the, the layer level. So if I apply it here, then every filter I put for this layer is going to be properly reflected. So again, what I've done, I'm on the erase, and when you click here, you see the filters on everything. Let's remove or erase the filter from her face and from her hair. Let's check to see if we are getting it halfway close and we are but let's get all of this off so we don't have any weird spots like we just saw weird impact to the image okay just get a little more done here and you'll see uh, the principle again this time it'll work much better so you get to see mistakes live as i make them if we get if we erase a little too much like i just did we can Go back to paint and paint that back in just a little bit there. Okay, you'll see it won't matter that much. Okay, now, whatever I put in this layer, and I'm going to start by putting back the saturation, uh, the impact will be felt for that entire layer. So let's desaturate that a little bit. You can even use a little vibrance if we want. Let's go back and put that hue shift in there. And I'll get rid of this catalog. Now, when we tweak the hue shift, look what happens. You see, it's only affecting uh, the part of the image that we, uh, uh, that we want to be uh, impacted. Now, you'll see here where I got a little bit. This is where I was just moving too quickly. Again, you want to fix that. You just come back here to brush. And you can sometimes make your filter a little smaller. You can brush, or your brush a little smaller, you can brush back in that little bit. When you click done, and the image resets itself, you'll find that it smooths out nicer. And again, you can take a little more time if you like. And so with Hue Shift, you can get some really creative sort of results. If you want to change that wall of LED lights, which was kind of uh, warm, white, almost a yellow, now it's blue. Or you can take it all the way uh, uh, toward... Uh, the other end actually that'll be a little more greenish there but you've got uh, some real creativity here and you can kind of find a background that may complement uh, the skin tones of your model i think that might be appropriate you can certainly come back and try a little more with the, the saturation and vibrance and see get it just where you want it the other thing though you may start to see is maybe now proportionally uh, the, her image her face may not feel as balanced with the rest of the image. So what you can do is come back and then with maybe even up here in raw develop, we could just tone down, reduce the uh, exposure just a bit. Now reselect your top layer, let it reset just a bit. It'll take it just a second. It is a raw image and you begin to get a a little more balanced image. I may have gone too far there, so I can go back to the raw image, bring the exposure up just a little bit, and then back to the top layer 
so we see all the effects let it reset and you can play back and forth to get just uh, the right kind of look that you want for your image so again what we've got is a $16 LED wall just an outside photo shoot this is actually under carport you would never know it uh, you can change the color of those LED lights to basically anything you want um, and you can make a really nice pleasing portrait and sort of balance that look and feel uh, between the portrait her face and the background again as a quick recap what we did was using the raw I would recommend a raw image for this because you got a lot of competing light uh, with the raw filter uh, change the color temperature to get it right. Tweak your exposure, a little contrast if you want to. In our case, we had a little hot spot. We could improve a little bit with that highlights, dropping the highlights. Then I uh, use structure just for a little skin smoothing, a little saturation of vibrance to bring down uh, the image just a bit. It was kind of, you know, kind of overly saturated in my opinion. And then make a new layer. And this is where you can get a bit more creative. We used saturation to again bring down the background and you can decide how much you want it down or how much you want it up. Uh, and because we used a filter up here uh, at the layer level, you saw where I made the mistake and didn't do it at the layer, but I did it at the filter. If I put a, if I sort of paint a mask in at the filter, it's only good for that filter. But if I paint the mask in at the layer, now it's going to impact every filter, whether I put two or 20, and that's what we wanted. Uh, but again, I encourage you to be creative because, and I haven't tried this yet, so who knows if it'll work. Um, do this kind of thing, uh, add a little bit of fog uh, to that. Now again, the fog is not gonna affect her face, it'll just affect that background. Now you'll begin to see that in something like this, you'll have to be a bit more careful about your masking or you get kind of a a, a corny a look that doesn't look realistic at all. Let's kill that filter and just try something else real quick. You can um, even try a bit of um, uh, try a soft focus if you just might want to reduce the sort of the sharpness of that that bouquet in the background. There you go. That might be a little more of a dreamy uh, sort of look. With this filter you can also tweak the brightness and so you can do a lot. You remember, you can always turn off this new layer. So you can say, okay, this is what it was before. And you, again, you see the nature of the LED lights back there. They're kind of yellowish, not particularly attractive, frankly. But now we've changed their color, added a little bit of soft focus to it. That might be appropriate. Um, you can, let's see a little matte look and a lot of this will just be experimenting to see what you like what you don't like let's see there's a little bit more uh, of that that sort of matte look so anyway i just wanted to show you some some options uh, to be creative again 16 dollar led light wall a little bit of playing around in luminar uh, to get the look you like and you can uh, you can do some good things so i hope that helps just a little bit Encourage you to practice making portraits, practice with Luminar, practice using multiple layers and these filters, especially practice putting these masks in place so that you can selectively tailor the image to just what you're looking for. Anyway, hope that might help uh, just a bit and uh, we'll catch up to you next time. Have a great day.